All right, what's going on, family? Welcome to another episode of the Tariq Elite Show. Let me get my clothes together. God damn. Live on Ustream, got that um, RBG shirt. You can get that at TariqElite.com, by the way. This is the dark gray color. Fits nice and fly, make you look real tight, make you look real thorough. Get your shirt at TariqElite.com right now. All right, we're here. It's Sunday night. We didn't do a show last week. Last week, I had to take my son to the hospital. Shout out to everybody in the room. Shout out to everybody who was giving me get well wishes for my baby boy. He's fine. He's fine. Now, he just got right yesterday. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm 30, almost 30 minutes late. I was supposed to start the show at 7, but I uh, was just running around for the family. You dig? I had to run around for the family. Because my son is going back to school in the morning. He hasn't gone to school all week because he was sick all week. Late just like a nigga. <laughs> this nigga right here. Nigga, but I'm never late for your mama's booty, nigga. When it's time to smack that ass, I'm there bright and early like a rooster, nigga. So uh, my, my my son was out for a week. Um, I, to this, I really don't know what was wrong with him, man. My son was very sick this week. Yeah, man, last Sunday, as you guys know, I was I was just starting the show. Then my wife texts me. She was like, hey, come upstairs because TJ is throwing up like crazy. It's like the exorcist. So he was just throwing up, just crazy throwing up. So what's up, Tariq Nasheed fan? I met you in Chicago. I remember you, young lady. So I, um, I, I stopped the show. And then I took him to the emergency room last Sunday. And, you know, they did some tests on him. They um, basically did an ultrasound on his stomach. They didn't find anything. They did a urine sample, didn't find anything. We were at the hospital all night, and they just let us go after a while. He was still throwing up. So I thought, okay, maybe Monday it'll get a little better. So Monday, he's still throwing up, still just groggy, sluggish. I'm out of shit. So I had to take him back to the emergency room on Monday. He's still throwing up. He's not eating anything. So I'm like, he must have some kind of stomach virus or, or something. A serious fine. A serious fine. So I take him to the emergency room again on Monday. <sighs> um, they draw blood. No, no. Did they draw? They didn't draw blood. No, they didn't. They didn't draw blood on Monday. But basically, we sat in the emergency room. They didn't tell us nothing. They did the test for fever. No, nothing. They Nothing. So it sent us on Monday. He's still sick on Tuesday. So Tuesday, I took him to another hospital. I took him to Children's Hospital over in Hollywood. Then they did the blood test on him to see if any viruses. Didn't have any viruses. Wasn't feverish. And he's just like slugging around. He's whining all day like he's in pain. He's just, just sleep and laying down. There's no stomach virus, no kind of virus, nothing. And this was um, Tuesday. All right, so they did the blood test, nothing. So Wednesday, you know, we hopefully we see if he gets better. He's still slugging around, still whining. He's not throwing up, but like he's just laying down all day, just, just all day. I'm like... This is scaring the shit out of me. Me and my wife, we're tripping out. We don't know what's going on. He's not eating. Nah, he's not eating nothing. He's not drinking nothing. We try to give him something. No. No, he wouldn't drink anything. <sighs> Fuck, it's, and he's, he, he's not using the restroom. He's constipated. I'm like, oh my God, what is going on with my baby boy? So we go to another hospital. Yet another one. This is the third hospital we go to because we went to two hospitals Sundays and Sunday and Monday. Went to another one Tuesday. So this is the third hospital. Third hospital we went to. Yeah. They do another blood test, and you know now my son he's just worn out. He's not eating, not drinking, slugging around, not using the restroom. He's acting like he's in pain. Now they they sticking these needles in his little arm. He's going nuts, and I'm just it's breaking my heart. So. They didn't find anything at the other hospital. Still, they're, they're confused. They don't know what's going on with him. So, the next day, yesterday, 
which was um, Friday. Was no, no, no. Saturday, Saturday. A Saturday, he's fine. He gets up and you know he starts. He's fine now. Yeah, he's fine. No, I don't think he caught anything at school. What? Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know. He's never acted like that before. My son is two and a half. My son is two and a half. So, yeah, these hospitals, man, that's why a lot of times I do like to go to holistic people because these hospitals don't be knowing shit, man. You know, and after a while, I'm like, you know, these. I'm, I'm going to start going to the holistic people. It could have been parasite. I, I have no idea what it could have been, man, but it, it's just amazing, man, that these hospitals, man, they make billions of dollars and don't really do shit. You dig? They make billions. They were doing this type of test and, you know, like in a hospital, a Band-Aid costs $1,000, but we got it. We have insurance, but just still. The, these hospitals are damn useless, damn near, man. He's fine now. People say take him to Dr. Sebi Tahuti. You know, that was, that was going to be another resort. And again, Dr. Sebi is in and out of the country, so. Uh, but that was going to be another resort. But he's fine now. He's, he's fine now. Yeah, they let the nurses do all the work. The practitioners do all the work. And they don't know what the hell they're doing. It's basically everybody just kind of guessing, well, it could be this and it could be that and it could be, you know, okay. The fuck are y'all talking about? Y'all don't know what makes a person sick? Y'all can't look. Okay. The hospitals are just there to patch you up, man. Yeah, hospitals are just there to patch you up. I mean, you know. Okay, he's good. He's back to normal. He is fine now. He's running around playing with his brother. So he's fine now. That's what's up, Mo Brown. I feel you. I wish it was $500, but luckily I got insurance. Shit. Them ultrasounds they be doing. Let me tell you something, man. When my wife, when we had our last baby... They had to cut her a little bit, so she had to get stitched up. So we, because we had the baby at the house, we had a midwife. And because they had to cut her, they had to call an ambulance. Ambulance and shit. Nigga, that ambulance bill is damn near two stacks. Nigga, that, and just the ride to that damn hospital, which is about five minutes away. I'm like, shit, we could have called Uber and put some damn towels on the seats. If I'm going to have a $2,000 ride, goddamn. Nigga, the, the medical industry, they gets their paper. They gets their paper. And don't tell you shit. And don't tell you jack. Let's see who's on the phone. A lot of folks are calling. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, how you doing, Tariq? This is Odera. I'm calling from Los Angeles out here. Hey, man. What's your name again, fam? O Odera. It's a Nigerian name, actually. Odera. Nigerian. There you go, brother. So, um, are you, your family's from Nigeria, I assume, right? Yeah, both my parents uh, both came here when they were 18. Oh, okay. New life themselves. And yes, and then, now, have you ever been over to Nigeria? Yeah, I actually got back there this summer. I've been there about five times since growing up. I'm 22 now. I'm in college. So, okay. Yeah, I'm going my whole life. Cool, cool. How, how'd you like it over there? It was interesting, man. Got to see the good, the bad, the ugly. A lot of suffering, but at the same time, you know, people still out there smiling. So. Oh, yeah, because I got footage. I actually have footage of you over in Nigeria. Is this you right here? Hold on. Yeah, you boy Banks. And this track is dedicated to all the ladies out there who like to go to the movies, you know, especially you, girl. Let me take it to the movie, shorty. I'm sure on you will be my so what's on your mind, man? Tell me what's on your mind. Listen, um, I'm just calling. I really got too much problems. I'm just going to ask if you can address that situation.
conversation with Snoop Dogg. I don't know if you saw the video of him uh, up there. He was talking. I guess he responded to some Chris that was saying that he couldn't come back to Long Beach. And yeah. They kicked him off the set or whatever. So uh, I just kind of want to know what you want to hear, what you said about that and how you feel about it. Yeah, now, are you from Long Beach, by the way? Nah, well, uh, I, I don't know if you know where Palos Verdes is. I grew up out there. Oh, yeah. Like, it's it nice different. out there. That's nice in Palos Verdes, man. Yeah, it's all white people up here. Right. It's uppity. It's yeah. Yeah. But yeah, let me let me address that now. I'll address that real quick, man. Thanks for the call. But yeah, for those who don't know, there was some um some dudes, some Crips down in Long Beach. They were addressing Snoop talking about well Snoop can't come back to the hood and all this stuff. And they they I think it was kind of unnecessary. They they didn't have to do all that. And basically, man, it's 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 dudes, y'all gotta cut that that shit out where it's a bunch of dudes who are still in the hood. And you're hating on people who are from the neighborhood. And Snoop, you know, he he's being political. He went down and talked to the dudes and all that old stuff. But some of these older cats, and, and Snoop had, his first response was great. He was like, hey, man, I'm out here for the kids. I'm not out here trying to babysit old, old dudes. And that makes a lot of sense because a lot of older brothers out here got to get off this whole shit where another man got to take care of me. Grown-ass black men are the only people on the planet who's going around whining about how another man should be taking care of them. Brothers got to get off that shit. Brothers got to get off that bullshit, man. Because that, that's real feminized, man. You sitting up, you, if you're an older dude still in the hood, man, that, that says a lot about your hustle, your grind. You're supposed to be out the damn hood because a hood is a place that's designated by the white supremacists. Hoods are created. If you're in a hood and you grown and you old, you fucked up in life. You're supposed to get out the hood and go somewhere and try to build a community. And the community starts with you. The community is just a mindset. But dudes shouldn't be on that bullshit. Y'all got to get off that. What's up, Ola? Shout out to my boy Ola in the house. Shout out to Ola. But if you're a certain age, man, if you're still in the hood, that means you've made some wrong turns. That means you've made some wrong turns. You said Floyd Mayweather said he ain't giving nothing back at his way. Well, I didn't hear him say it, so I can't really speak on it. What you say, Mike Dark Rizzo? You said it's not designed that way. I don't understand what you mean. Please elaborate, sir. But yeah, if you're in the hood and you old and, and a man, I'm talking about a, a, a man because the hood is designed for women and children. The hood is designed for women and children. It's designed for women and children. I've said this many times. It's designed for women and children, and it's designed for men to go to jail eventually because there is nothing in the hood. That's why it's a hood. The hood is a place that's designated by the white supremacists where they have taken all the resources and maldistributed the resources out, and they've created hoods. They've gentrified certain areas and made them hoods. So the fact that there are no there are limited resources in these places, by definition, because that's what makes them a hood, people are going to have to get into the underworld to try to get resources in these hoods, and usually that's going to send you to jail. Because the thing is, if you're not getting resources to get out of there, you're defeating the purpose of being out here hustling. You know, the hood is a prison. The hood is nothing but a prison. It's nothing more than a prison. Because you don't control it. You're in an economic deprived situation that you don't control. Now, Kat said, okay, let's us get together and let's start buying up these businesses and let's start buying off these politicians and let's start getting stuff cracking and build an economy in this area. Then it wouldn't be a hood no more. But cats don't do that. Cats get their money so they can turn up and get rims and smoke and drink and do all this old bullshit. <laughs> so... You know, I don't know, Snoop, you know, he he was playing, he was being politically correct with the dudes. And, you know, he went down there and took a couple of photos with dudes out there. So, you know, I don't know 
the relationship he had with the dudes out there. I don't know. You dig? I don't know if he's trying to save face. I don't know. I like Snoop. I got a lot of respect for Snoop. You dig? <clears throat> but Cat's got to get off that. For the dudes out there talking about why he got to get out the hood. and All right. Uh, let's stop pretending that niggas own the hood, all right? You don't own the hood. Now, those Long Beach Crips are for real now. Let's be, you know, let's, let's, I, I know some of them Long Beach Crips, them, especially them insanes, because the dude who was, who kind of made the video or made the audio talking about Snoop or whatever. I think the dude is from Long Beach Insane. And that's the perfect name for that fucking set. Them niggas are, in, are insane. Them niggas are crazy. Long Beach Insane Crips are infamous for being on that, that, that dumb shit. Them niggas are about that life. I get it. And those Long Beach Insanes, they've earned that name. Long Beach is known for turning up, too. They've always turned up. Long Beach got, the, the gang issue got in the national spotlight back in 1986 when the world got a glimpse of how Long Beach gets down. There was, um, there was a concert that Run DMC had out there in Long Beach. There was a concert in 1986. Run DMC had a concert out there in Long Beach. And them dudes got to scrap it, and they turned that shit out. It became international with nationwide news. Yeah, but those insanes, those, those Long Beach insane niggas are insane. I was in the county with a nigga from Long Beach insane years ago. I remember specifically how crazy this nigga was. And didn't nobody fuck with him in the county. And he was in there for some crazy ass charges too. This nigga, he was in there for like robbery, assault, and arson. I'm like, what the fuck did this nigga do? Did this nigga rob somebody, beat him up, and then set him on fire? What the fuck did this nigga do? I got damn. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I saw that interview with Waka Flocka. Waka was dropping some real good game, man. Waka was dropping some heat. I'm glad to see, man, people like Waka really mature and spit some real shit. He was spitting some real shit. And there were some people who tried to get on him about his comments about homosexuality. And they all, they always, the white supremacists send the gay police at us all the time. Black folks, when we speak on something, when we want to talk about issues and all that, the, the white supremacists, they send their shaming committee. Oh, yeah, Walker's seen Hidden Colors. Walker, Walker took a picture holding the Hidden Colors DVD. So we see his mind is there. Walker's there. Walker is there. Yeah, he, he, he was talking about Caitlyn. He, he was saying Bruce, and then the they were talking about how he was being disrespectful, calling Caitlyn Jenner Bruce. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. <clears throat> he say it was so sad to see Compton's Richard Sherman get on the coon train. Yeah, they they beat Richard Sherman into submission. I just saw a commercial with Richard Sherman on there. So I said, oh, okay, there you go. I, I just literally, about 30 minutes ago, I was looking at TV. There was some kind of commercial with him on there. So they beat him into submission. They beat him into submission. The white supremacists got to him. They, they tied him up and made him say Toby. All right? They beat the, the, the rebel out of him. A year ago, they were calling him a nigga and a thug, a gangster criminal. They were going in on him. Now he's one about black on black crime. Now he didn't got on the damn train. That was shameful. That was shameful. And they were mentioning King Noble. And, uh, and they keep mentioning King Noble. They keep saying that he's a leader of Black Lives Matter. That's why I know the media, they're in on these agents. King Noble ain't no damn leader of shit. This dude is a known, suspected agent. For years, people have suspected this dude to be an agent. King Noble, I mean, he watch. King Noble watches everything I do and, and makes little videos about it, you bum-ass nigga. King Noble ain't nobody's leader. 
He ain't no leader of Black Lives Matter. That nigga, everybody's been saying this nigga's an agent for years. An agent provocateur for years. He's such a ridiculous, dusty, nobody, joke-ass nigga. And the white supremacist media will get out there talking about he's a leader. Whenever the white supremacists start telling you who the leaders are, you always know it's a trick bag. He's a weirdo. This is somebody that nobody follows, nobody takes seriously at all. Just like that one Black Panther dude that the white supremacists love to try to hang their hat on. They're like, well, racism goes both ways. See, the Black Panthers were stopping people from voting. And that's that one dude. What's that? I can't think of his name. That little homeless looking dude who was part of the Black Panthers, who people suspect him of being an agent too. He was standing outside this building. He had like a a cane, and they were trying to pretend it was a weapon, and they're trying to make it seem like this dude is somehow relevant in black society, and nobody knows or take this dude seriously. But yeah, the white supremacists are very slick. They're very slick about telling us who the leaders are going to be. They're very slick about that. Don't forget, everybody, speaking of melanoid power, go to uh, melanoidnation.org, melanoidnation.org, and like I said, if you go to my Instagram at Tariq Elite, every week, we at Melanoid Nation, we're going to be making donations to different African-centered schools all around the country. We're doing it. We show you the receipts and everything on Instagram, but go make a small donation, and that's the thing. Make a small donation if you want to get involved at melanoidnation.org. And also get the flag, the Melanoid Nation flag at melanoidnation.org. Get the Melanoid Nation flag at melanoidnation.org. Let's see who we got on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? This is uh, Morgan from Fresno, California. How you doing, bro? Hey, Morgan. How you doing, fam? Doing good, bro. How are you? I'm good. What's on your mind? Oh, um, man, I just wanted to uh, know um, what advice you would have for uh, young entrepreneurs who are trying to step up out of the 9-to-5 jobs and uh, go to independent route. Yes, indeed. What do you do as a 9-to-5? Uh, right now, I'm just working at a casino. I uh, do surveillance. Okay. So I'm uh, just chilling doing that right now. And I'm going to school part time out here in Fresno. Okay. But I wanted to know um, as far as, uh, you know, doing independent work, uh, any advice you would have for me? Now, I would always say you do what you know. If you do what you know and you enjoy what you do and you, you're passionate about what you do, the money is going to come. Now, what do you like to do? What are you passionate about? What do you do as a hobby? Okay. Um,. As of now, uh, I'm starting to get more into music. Right now, I'm, I'm into production and uh, writing songs and stuff like that. So uh, I got my SoundCloud going right now. But as far as uh, my hobbies, I really like to produce music on the side. Okay, and now, now that's the thing. Now you got to understand that's an oversaturated market right now. We got everybody and their mama mm -hmm. out here producing music. All right, so every mm -hmm. black person has a demo, has the whole shebang. So. You got to think of some other things that's going to stand out. You can do that too, but think of something that's going to stand out that's in your own lane that you can do if the music thing don't pop off because now the music is almost gambling now. Because also, if you get in the music game, the, the record deals right now are so janky, if you don't understand business, you're going to get fucked. All right? That's another thing. Okay. Cats, cats want to get into the music industry, not to really get money, but just to get ass. To get ass and attention, and you don't pay attention to the contracts, you don't understand how these people working behind the scenes are not in it for attention. You got a bunch of white supremacists who's there to find niggas who are in it for attention so they can rob them blind. All right, so you're gonna have to learn business one way or another. There's no way around that. So, my, my, yeah, my, my I, thing I, is, I understand that, man, because uh, I mean, there's nine to five stuff. I never saw myself working a regular job, so I mean, I'm just trying to find something that I can do uh, that would, you know, 
bring a nice income to me. And then I could also uh, start, you know, start, start thinking about being an well. executive. Start thinking about being an executive. That's what we need. Because remember, L.A. Reed from L.A. and Babyface, he started off as a drummer for a group called The Deal. And then L.A. Mm-hmm. Reed woke up one day and said, hey, you know, fuck being an artist. Let me be a producer. So he became a producer with Babyface. Then he woke up again. He said, wait a minute. I'm out here producing and fuck producing. Let me just be a an executive. That's where the real money is. And he became an executive and one of the most well-respected executives in the game. So start thinking along those lines of owning and controlling and things like that. Start thinking about that now because we need more people thinking like that. Thanks for the call. <clears throat> Let me tell y'all something. Let, let, let's have some deep combo right now. Especially my, my young people who are about, who, who want to get into the music industry and all this old stuff. Because a lot of us in the, in the black community, in the melanoid community, we want to get into the music industry because that's something that the white supremacists, they kind of allow that. That's something that they will uh, let, they will let us get in without us being threatened. But well, we see a whole bunch of us. So we like, okay, that's a safe place to go. But you got, you got to understand this. The white supremacists, man, they got the game rigged to a certain degree. And you got to start thinking in terms of ownership. And one thing, the main thing, family, this is something that y'all need to understand for the rest of your life. When you suspect somebody of being a white supremacist, and, and again, all white people are not white supremacists. Let's be very clear. But we got a lot of white supremacist suspects out here. Family, just because somebody's treating you nice and smiling in your face, that don't mean that they're not a white supremacist. And a white supremacist is somebody who will simply take advantage of your naivete. You understand? And this is what a lot of these white supremacist managers and agents will do. They are so slick They will take advantage of your naivete. They'll take advantage of your lack of knowledge. They will fuck you blind. And the problem with black folks, you come from the hood. A lot of black folks are from the hood or whatever. So you've been deprived economically. So any opportunity you have to get in the door, you're like, fuck it. I'll sign anything. And then after your first album, after you done got the little bullshit advance they gave you, which is usually $100,000, $200,000 at the most, you done tricked that off. And then you're like, okay, I done sold all these records. Where, where's the money? And there's no more money. They didn't look. The white supremacists they don't fuck around with that paper. They get real slick when it comes to the paper, because the name of the game for them is to keep money going so they can pass it down. Do you know there was a story that just came out a couple of days ago with Stevie Wonder? Stevie Wonder. Who's blind, as we know, is suing the widow of his former lawyer. Do you know what the lawyer did? And this is Stevie's lawyer for almost 50 years. Stevie signed a contract with this lawyer, this white guy, this suspected white supremacist. Stevie wanted to sign a contract with this guy when Stevie was 21 years old. This was in 1965. Can't think of the guy's name right now, the lawyer. He's a white guy, white lawyer. He was Stevie Wonder's lawyer. He was representing Stevie until 2011. I think the lawyer died in 2011. Stevie, you know, hey, this is my lawyer for a long time. You know, you know, it, shit happens. Come to find out that some of Stevie's royalties are going to the lawyer's widow. And Stevie just found this out. Like, whoa, why the fuck are my royalties going to this my, my former lawyer who's dead? Why is it going to his widow? So I guess they had somebody look over the contracts. And what the lawyer did, the lawyer slipped in a clause saying that Stevie Wonder owes him like 6% of the royalties for perpetuity. Meaning that the royalties go to the, the man's heirs and his descendants. So this 6% goes on forever. So when the guy, the lawyer dies, so the royalty money goes to the lawyer's family and their family and their kids and their grandkids. So Stevie Wonder's family and his estate, his catalog, owes this lawyer's descendants for the next 
two, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred years. Jonathan Vigoda, that's right, Jonathan Vigoda. I ain't never heard no shit like that in my life. Now Stevie was like, I didn't, I didn't agree to that. Motherfucker, I'm blind. Of course I didn't see no shit like that. So the dude, the lawyer, knowing that Stevie was blind, slipped that in the contract and didn't say nothing. And this motherfucker's wife is getting Stevie's residuals. The dead lawyer's wife is getting Stevie's residuals. Now, Stevie has a hell of a catalog. Look, look, look. Stevie has a hell of a catalog. That's long money. 6% sounds little. That's big money, man, when you talk about a catalog that brings in hundreds of millions of dollars. Stevie's catalog is classic, man. Stevie had major hits. His, his songs are in movies, commercials. So the publishing on his songs, people done remade them. That's long money. That old school Motown money, all that old Motown shit, that's, that's major paper. When I, dude, y'all cannot trust these white supremacists, man. These white supremacists will rob, literally rob the blind. You know how cold you got to be? Yeah, that, that's like, what, 900000 annually? Because the wife, she's like, okay... Let's sell a lot of court for seven million. And I know Stevie's like, can, can I can't see her, but can you tell her to eat a dick? Wherever she is, tell that bitch to eat a dick. I can't see her. She wants to settle for seven million dollars. The fuck out of here. It's a blind dude. The white supremacists are shameless, dude. They are shameless with it. Dude, so this dude's family's going to eat off Stevie while he's dead. They, I give it, I give that to the white supremacists. They look out for their offspring. They will rob everybody to look out for their offspring. I will give them that. They will look out for their offspring. That's how white supremacy works. We got to start doing that. That's why I look out for these kids out here. This is why I give so much money to these children at schools. We got to start having that type of tenacity for our offspring. I ain't saying be scandalous. Because that's some scandalous shit to rob a blind dude. To slip in some shit in a contract for a blind dude. You know he can't read it. That's why Ray Charles was... Ray Charles was like, look, give me fuck a check. Pay me my money cash and count, get it changed in one. So I can hear you count my money in my hand. One, uh-huh, two... Three, four, I won't change. Get changed, bitch. Yeah, the contract's been in effect, I guess, since, see, because, you know, you, I, I guess the lawyer was all grinning in his face and all that stuff. But, see, we got this thing where, oh, I, I do, trust me. You know, I do better look over him again, too. That's another thing, because... One of my, um, I just got Simon and Schuster to start sending me my residuals because they were sending it to one of my old agents. And I, I, I was like, look, I don't want my money going to you, dude. I let him know. With my old literary agent, I told him, do not. And I told Simon and Schuster, don't send my check to him because he gets his little percentage and all that. I don't know. Give me, you, if y'all send him a percentage, whatever y'all send him, send me my shit directly to me. Where is that? I just got a check from Simon and Schuster. They both of them knocked out. Eight o'clock, and TJ has pizza in his hand. Yeah, I, I just got. Uh, he's he's asleep with a pizza in his hand. What's that? Where, where I can't see myself. Hold on, that's my wife right here. Hold on, I can't see shit. Hold on. Yeah, this is Simon and Schuster right here. I just had them. They just sent me a, a a check for one of my my old books. I'm like, y'all send that bitch directly to me to my house. I told him, don't send that to no managers, no lawyers. Send me my royalty checks for my books to me. I ain't going out. I want to see where every dividend has gone. I want to see what's been broken up, cut up, all that stuff. Because, see, my money, when, when I'm gone, it's going to my kids. Excuse me. Let me watch it. <laughs> and my wife. 
And I don't know to my kids, because if I die, if my wife get a new nigga, I don't want this nigga eating off my book money. <laughs> a what? <laughs> so you're going to be like Coretta Scott King, just be a widow forever. Would you be a widow forever? Hell yeah. Oh, I'd be yeah, like, bitches, would. get off me. You would. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I wouldn't touch no more pussy. <laughs> I'd be so I'd be a monk. <laughs> I'd be having a robe on young ho Renge Kyo. <laughs> Man. He don't have school? Oh, okay. He, oh damn. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man, you gotta start monitoring your paper. Yeah, you got to monitor your paper. But that's how they do, man. That that slick thing they did with Stevie, man. Brothers, y'all got to start looking at these contracts. Y'all got to stop trusting these suspected white supremacists. Same thing. They they do the same thing. What you doing, Steve? They do the same thing, man, over and over again. Look at the movie straight out of Compton. They did the same thing to Easy. Turn the fan around this way, baby. It's hot as hell. They did the same thing. Jerry Heller, same thing with Easy. Easy's trusting them. They got that whole thing with Jerry Heller's like a father to me. That's how they get niggas, too, with that whole I'm going to be a father to you shit. Because they know that brothers, they grow up fatherless because the white supremacists take the fathers out of the home. You have two kids in here? Yeah, I do. And look at the movie straight out of Compton. Baby, yeah. <laughs> Jerry Hill was allegedly taking advantage of Easy. You did? Look at what happened to Luke the Campbell. Luke Skywalker, Uncle Luke. He's another one. And Luke is a pretty street smart dude, a business savvy dude. But what happened? He messed up. He brought a suspected white supremacist in to help run his label. This guy named Joe something. That... I can't think of his last name. White dude. He bought this accountant into his business because Luther was making millions of dollars. That two live crew, Uncle Luke Records, all that stuff, H-Town, all that stuff was making millions of dollars. Luke was stacking major dollars. He brought this white supremacist, suspected white supremacist in to manage, you know, the day-to-day -day operations and all that. Little Joe, I can't think of Little Joe's last name, but... That damn accountant manipulated some shit, and now the accountant owns the catalog. That account, Luke don't own none of that shit no more. Luke the Camel, that accountant, fuck Luke silly. And that accountant, his name is, they call him Little Joe, but he now owns the Two Live Crew catalog. Y'all, y'all gotta stop trusting these white supremacists so much, man. We, we got this thing where, We give, we give people a pass. We think that they got our best interest. They, the white supremacists never have our best interest, man. That's just a harsh reality. That's a harsh reality, dude. So you got to watch all of these suspected racists who come into your, your business, and you should never give them the keys to the business, so to speak. That's the worst thing you can do. Joe Weinberg, I think that's his name. You don't give him the keys to your business. That's what that's where Easy messed up with Hella. That's where Easy messed up with Hella, because Hella was signing those checks. They had a dual account, which the Easy should not have done, where Jerry Hella and Easy had to both sign off on checks. So y'all gotta stop giving these people the keys to your business, because at the end of the day. Dude, they ain't looking out for you. Historically, have the white supremacists ever looked out for you? They're going to look out for themselves at the end of the day. That's why all these athletes, when you see them, when they're getting drafted, they all hugged up under the white coaches and the white owners, and the, they, they running that game. Oh, this nigga's like a son to me. Oh, my, look at these little niggas. They're just like sons to me. And then when you stop playing, you broke. All these football players and basketball players went right when they were retire, they broke as hell. Yeah, Master P was smart. Yeah, Master P was smart. 
Master P, like, I, I'm running this. I'm not giving nobody the keys to my shit. I got it. He's not broke. No, Master P ain't broke. Master P ain't broke. Master P's like, hey, look, I, you know, I run this. Yeah, I gotta put some Windex on it. So, yeah, y'all gotta. Cats, I, yeah, they just underestimate how, how slick these people are. They, they really underestimate, so many black folks really underestimate how slick these people are. But no, 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 Master P, I don't think he's broke. Let's see who's on the phone. What's up, who's calling? What's up, man? This is Zen and VA. Hey, man, what's going on? What's on your mind? Man, I ain't talked to you in forever, Flex, man. How you been? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Man, a couple of things. It's a lot, actually, but I'm going to narrow it down because it's been so long since I talked to you. Now, when did you but, talk to um, me last time? I don't remember. When last time you talked to me? Man, it's been, it's probably been six, more than six months. Okay, I don't... It's, you... probably, it's probably been more than six months, man. I called the show a long time ago. Okay. But... But at any rate, man, I got a couple of what I feel is answers to some of the stuff we're hearing from these celebrities that's got a platform out here talking about what about black on black crime. Yeah. Uh, when they come down from the platform or wherever they get down from, we need to say, well, since you're interested in black on black crime and you have a concern about that, uh, we fully expect that you'll be donating to Project Ceasefire, um, Stop the Violence Movement, 300 Black Men, The Interrupters in Chicago, yeah. Melanoid Nation. Mm -hmm. And we need to start a watchdog group so that we can enforce that and go after these folks the way Steve Coakley used to chase them down the street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a good we, idea. We, we, That's we a good, need a way to get at them. Instead of just putting them on the coon train, we need to hit, hit them in the pocket that, that, they have a concern. Yeah, you know what? That's a good strategy, brother, to be honest. All these coons that get on TV talking about what about black on black crime, you need to shake them down and say, okay, how come you're not donating to all of these anti-crime organizations since you're so concerned when you get around white folks? So we need to shame their asses into doing just that. That's an excellent idea, fam. That's an excellent exactly. idea. Yes, indeed. Exactly. We, we put a watchdog organization together like Project Coon Watch or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It'll be like an umbrella organization like Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we'll funnel money to those groups that yeah. the organizations that's actually doing the work. Yes. So we'll use that organization to actually uh, uh, shake them down. Yes, we, we do. The, the, the number two thing we need to do, I'm going to let you get a word in, but the number two thing we need to do, we definitely need an award show for people like yourself, Dr. Gerald Horn, who I hope will be, you'll get with him. I know it's too late to put him in Hidden Colors, but just to let your listeners know, that's one of our prolific authors. Please pick up his work, Dr. Gerald Horn. Yes, indeed. H-O-R-N. Dr. Frippo Carr and um, Shahazad Ali, people that are actually getting, doing tangible things out here, writing the books, uh, doing the films, uh, starting the organizations, because we need to learn how to give props to people other than entertainers. Like you're talking about entertainers tonight. Yes, indeed. Uh, we need to learn how to give props to people like yourself. Much and uh, even if we get this show, award show on UPN at 1 o'clock in the morning, we need to figure out a way to, to get these award show televised or either get us a commercial at the Super Bowl. We'll, we'll get so much money from shaking down these coons yeah. that we can get an award show <laughs> and get a commercial at the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Uh, we do. We need to get Coon Watch going right away. We need to get that right away. Yeah. Yes, and, yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you for the yes, call. Indeed. Thank you for the call, man. <laughs> yeah, man, that's a good idea. We need to get Project Coon Watch. <laughs> And we need to start hitting up people like Stephen A. Smith needs to be the first one coughing up some bread. Stephen A. Smith needs to be the first one since he loves hollering about black on black crime and all that old stuff. Yeah, but my man, he he's right on. What do you think? Damn. Are you sexually harassing me? You know? <laughs> Yeah, that's what we need. It's like a version of the Drop Squad. And I know that um, 
brother um Claude Anderson used to talk about how they used to do like um like it was some kind of sellout awards they used to have in Detroit, like an Uncle Tom awards that they used to have that they would elect like Uncle Tom's. It was like a little ceremony that they would have. I forgot the name of it. It's in one of his books, I think Powernomics, where they talked about how they would shame these coons in certain cities who would work with the white supremacists to disenfranchise and take money out of the black community. And they had like a little award show for him. But yeah, my man, he he he's sitting on all cylinders. That was some good stuff he was saying. We do. We need Project Coon Watch. What's Coco Doe saying? I can't see what Coco Doe is saying. But um, you know, we we got to get on. We got to get real serious about what's happening out here. The Charles one, it's like the crispy. I know. Just have a coon. And, <laughs> we should have a butter biscuit award show, and we give out the golden biscuits. Wouldn't that be tight? We get a, a, a the butter biscuit, <laughs> the butter biscuit award. We give out golden biscuits. It's a golden biscuit plaque. We get one to Larry Elder. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith. There's a little kid. There's a kid now. What's that? It's C. G. C. J. Pearson. They starting the coon train young. They got a little kitty caboose on the coon train. There's a little kid. He's like 13 or 14 named C.J. Pearson. And basically they have him making these YouTube videos regurgitating white supremacist talking points. And the white supremacists all rallying around him, acting like he's a hero. You got to watch that. When a bunch of suspected white supremacists are calling you a hero and all that. Usually you're doing something to maintain white supremacy, which means that you're diverting attention away from white supremacy and you're talking about black on black crime and all that. And that kid, his, his parent, I don't blame him because you just, you're a kid, you don't know no better. I blame his parents. That shea butter. It's old, huh? I don't know what it is. Smell like lemon. Smell like lemon. Okay, I, I got, what is this, old shea butter? Okay. It smells funny. I, I get stuff. People, when I travel, I don't know if I should put this on my skin because people it's give me stuff all the time. People sugar. give me gifts. Oh, it's sugar scrub. Oh, sugar. Okay, I'm rubbing this shit on my arm. I'm yeah. Okay, I ain't supposed to. This is wash, I guess. Okay, shit. I'm not supposed to put this on. They need to label this shit. It's, this one's labeled. Okay. Sugar scrub. Okay. I don't know. Somebody gave me this. It's <laughs> a, a, a lemongrass sugar scrub. Let's put it on my elbow and I hope my shit is all right. People always give me gifts and stuff when I go out and about. But sometimes I got to watch it. Some dude came up to me in one of my lectures after backstage. He's like, hey, man, I've mixed this drink for you, man. It's like with ginger, lemongrass, yohimbi, and it got some moringa in it. And it's real health. I'm thinking about marketing. It just gave it to me in like a thermos. I'm like, I ain't about to drink this shit, nigga. <laughs> just like that popcorn. What the fuck are you doing? I ain't about to drink that. <laughs> Man, yeah, I mean, I don't, not to say, I, you know, I'm just not trying to fuck with nothing edible. Well, yeah. Popcorn showed up at our house. Yes, yeah. Oh, I don't, some pop, yeah, somebody sent me some popcorn in a, in a bucket with no cap on the bucket, just a, a bucket of popcorn where you just take the lid off and the popcorn is there. It wasn't even wrapped up or sealed or nothing. I'm like, uh, I'm about to send this in the back for the coyotes. <laughs> I ain't about to eat that at all. You know, but I'm not about to drink some shit from somebody that I don't know in a thermos that they didn't mix themselves. You know, then I, I drink that shit and I shrink. I be looking like this. So I'm I'm cool on that. But the Young Turks went in on Damon Wayans. I, I didn't I didn't hear him do that. 
what the, okay, this shit kind of itches now. I shouldn't have put that on. Maybe we'll put it around the house with the snakes. But yeah, if y'all saw my Instagram, not my Instagram, but my Facebook, I showed you there was, I went outside yesterday. There was a guy, there was a, well, I was, um, a delivery guy came over. And this motherfucker, he rang the doorbell and he kind of ran back a little bit. I'm like, what the fuck is you doing? And he's like, there's a snake by your house. I looked out, I'm like, oh, shit. The damn rattlesnake in front of my house, by my garage, trying to get in the house. So I ran that off. And um, I went outside last night, and I saw in the back, like, a little baby snake up in the wall, like, in, the, in a brick in the wall. I'm like, okay, this motherfucker's laying eggs around here. What you say? Peanut got a sister. Western High School. Who went to Western High School in 1990? Which West End you go to? The one in Birmingham? The sugar scrub can be used while bathing. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't know about using a sugar scrub. That just don't sound right. A A E G. You keep saying the same thing, brother. You got to stop saying the same thing. Put my wife on. You would love to hear her thoughts. You know, I don't want to say nothing. Yeah, that's true. Shit, because yeah, he said the guy is our angel because I I don't think I was going anywhere that day. But hell, sometimes when I leave, you know, T J kind of runs out the house. And he don't know. He don't, you know. TJ would have ran up and tried to grab the shit, thinking it's a toy. <laughs> Say the sugar scrub is amazing. I'm going to bathe with this shit. No homo. I'm going to bathe with it. That's for the crispy puppet. Yeah, that's for the crispy puppet. Are you gonna go to sleep yeah. Sleep music. Yeah, I got some crispy puppet skits. That's funny as damn hell coming out, dude. I got some good ones coming out in the next couple of weeks. But Ben Carson is another victim of white supremacy, doing whatever he needs to do in order to get a place on the slave ship that's comfortable. That's all it is. You know, that's why I take a lot of the coon train stuff with a grain of salt. Coco Doe, don't ask the same question again, brother. I don't know what car that's from. I don't know. What's up? Who's calling? <laughs> Yo, this is Devontae. Hey, Devontae, where you calling from? Calling from Oklahoma. Hey, what's on your mind, Devontae? Man, um, I have like a dating question. Go ahead. I can um, do that. Go ahead. Okay, like I'm trying to get back into like the dating game. So I like join like a couple, you know, like some dating sites and stuff like that. So I was talking to this one specific female. Right. So I like, like I was kind of talking to her for like a week or two, something like that. But then I kind of found out that, like, she's actually, like, a transsexual. So, like, what do you do in that situation? How you find out she was transsexual, dude? This, this well, sounds like, actually, sound like some bullshit. This sounds like some troll shit. But go ahead. You found out she was transsexual. Go ahead. Nah, well, um, she actually came out and told me, like, she's actually in the middle of um, switching genders. But she hasn't got the full surgery yet. So, like, I was thinking, well, like, if I mess with her, like, should it be, like, kind of on the low so, like, no one else can figure it out? Like, you know? Now, what do you think? Do you like her? I mean, I mean, she's kind of attractive, but it's a man. So, I can't let, like, other people know that I'm attracted to men. Right. Because right. that's not a good look. So, I'm wondering, should I, like, do it on the low and then kind of cut future contact with her? Now let's be real. You you didn't you didn't hit that already. You you hit it already. Let's just be real. You done lifted them balls up and you went to town on that dead man. But you did it. Let's let's stop playing. No, not no, not yet. 
Yes, you have, nigga. You, nigga, you moist. That train is probably over there right now, waxing the hairs off your asshole right now, getting you prepared for the night, nigga. So let's stop playing games, all right? And get your ass off my phone, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. Is he joking? Yeah, he's... I knew this nigga was trolling. I knew this dumbass nigga was trolling. Yeah. Yeah, I knew he was trolling. Yeah, he had that dumb sound in his voice when he called up. I knew. I knew, nigga. You dig? And this is for you, Devontae. Get out of here, you damn nigga! That's for you, Devontae. All right, let's see who else we got. What's up? Who's calling? Yeah, it's Rodney from New York. What's up, Rodney from New York? How are you, sir? I'm good, and you? I'm good. What's on your mind, Rodney from New York? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to know, did you see about? Uh, did you see that hockey player that gave $10 million to that uh, children's hospital? I heard about uh, it. The black hockey player? I heard about it. I heard about it. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing because uh, we can't even get uh, Brother Umar's school open and uh, we got niggas cooning out here giving uh, $10 million to white people and shit. Well, was it, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there were some black students. Well, he gave it to a school or a hospital? A uh, children's hospital. Okay, well, that's not a bad thing. I mean, there's black children that go there, too. You take it. There are no black hospitals. So that was something that I guess he was passionate about. I won't call a man a coon for giving money to, to children who need it. You, you feel me? Yeah. All right, man. All right, thank you for the call, brother. All right, this nigga was... Right. Don't, don't reach for hate, all right? All right. Don't reach for nothing to hate about now. The man did the right thing. That was cool, giving money to children. Yeah, that's not cool. And sometimes cats got to... All right, y'all be all over the place reaching. Now, nah, y'all be looking for a reason to hate. Now, speaking of lectures, I'm going to be doing a lecture in um, Toledo, Ohio. That's in November 14th. I will have the details soon. My man, um, the promoter, um, send me the flyer. I, I need the promoter to send me the flyer to the, 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 the venue so I can let people know so I can promote it. But that's going to be on uh, November 14th in a um, couple of months. All right? Man going their own way. Yeah, I, I know about that so-called movement, but basically, it's too many white supremacists involved in that, because some of these dudes, you let them talk long enough, they'll start sounding just like white supremacists. Yeah, I'm going to drop some good game in Toledo, Ohio. Y'all need to come on up. When am I coming to D.C.? Well, I'll be in D.C. on um, October 10th at the, um, the Million Man March Anniversary. I'll be there at the Million Man March anniversary. Mr. John, no, you cannot bring cameras to my lecture. No, absolutely not. I will have my security make you take that camera down. Nope, you cannot have cameras at my lecture. No, 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 not at all. Let's see who we got here. What's up? Who's calling? What's up, Tariq? It's Joy Boston. What's your name? Joy Boston in Jacksonville, Florida. Joy Boston in Jacksonville. Have you called up before, Joy? No, this is my first time. Oh, okay. So what's going on down there in Jacksonville, Joy? Absolutely nothing but nice weather. There you go. Oh. That's oh. it. That's it. I just had a quick question for you. I read an article regarding sin stocks, and it was something that I had never heard of before. And it was stating that Michael Jordan and all of these other black entertainers were investing in the stocks of the private owned uh, correctional facilities. And I just wanted to get your take on that. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if they were. Now, I don't know, so I can't confirm, so I can't really bash or anything because I don't know that. I do not know okay. that. And I, I'm a research type of dude. I like to know facts before I even put my opinion in there. But again, these... Correctional facilities, these corporations, they are publicly owned corporations and mm -hmm. they do make a lot of money. And this is what we have to do. We got to do things to deter. These are plantations. 
They're right. nothing more than plantations. They. This is why the laws are getting crazier and crazier and crazier right now. There was a brother, I want to say he was in Florida, by the way. I, I, I'm not sure if he was in Florida, but he was, I want to say he was. He got arrested for sagging pants. They had one of those mm-hmm. sagging pants laws. They arrested him for sagging his pants, and then they ended up sending him to some penal farm out there where he had to work. So they're using, they're going to use every excuse imaginable to send black people to jail. They're going to target black folks. So this is why we got to stop playing around with white supremacy and call it what it is. White supremacy is alive and well, and white supremacy is slavery. When the white supremacists Mm -hmm. try to tell us that slavery was a million years ago, slavery is right now, 2015. So we got to be serious about that. What do you do out there, by the way, Jordan? Currently, um, I work at a, a financial institute, excuse me, a financial institution underwriting, but I'm looking to start my own website. I emailed you a couple of weeks ago. I ain't bother you on it because I know you get a lot. Yeah. Um, just trying to get your intake on the name I should go with because um, I don't want to deal with no whole tip, you know, yeah. BS stuff. Yeah. And I didn't really even know that was a thing until I started listening to you with Moors and Ewapian and all these other types of things going on. Yeah. I'm just, you know, sort of building and learning. So, but I'm looking to quit my job in February and go full time and handle some business. So, um, now I'll what, be looking to interview you soon. Yes, indeed. Now, what kind of, what kind of website did you, were you, did you have in mind? Like, what's the actual business you want to do? Well, basically, what I'll be doing is it'll be highlighting everything as black excellence, all positivity. When celebs do black celebs do charity work, there'll be a never forget tab, so where we will never forget the atrocities that have been done. So a ton of research on that. Yeah. Black excellence when we have children that are doing great. Um, when celebs take you know uh, selfies with fans, and you know a lot of times they get a bad rep, but when they do, they don't get praised for it. So yeah. a lot of positivity is going to be a very positive website and blog. A link to black businesses, people can send information. All everything black excellence is what it's all going to be based on. There you go. All right, well, I'll, I'll definitely yeah. chop it up with you as far as that. Cool. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you, dear. Yeah, have a good night. Thank you. That's Joy from Jacksonville. Man, did y'all see, And then like, like I was saying, the laws, now they got laws out here now because the prison industrial complex is a business. And they're targeting the people who have the least political clout, the least economic clout. They're targeting black folks and they're creating race specific laws they're making laws more strict and harsher that that target black people that's how the game works they find out something that black people do or something that involves a number of black people and then they make it illegal and then make the sentences much harsher and it's all race based because you got white dudes who sag their pants, too. You got a lot of these white dudes who try to emulate all the black rappers. You never hear about them getting arrested for sagging. You have white supremacist pedophiles out here. You fucking kids like they're going, it's going out of style. Fucking them silly. They don't get punished like that. Like Jared, the subway guy. The dude from Subway, Jared had child pornography. He's a pedo. D- is he actually going to do jail time? I heard, at first the, the sentence was a slap on the wrist from what I heard, but then I heard they were just going to give him like house arrest or some shit like that. So is he actually, I don't even think he's going to do jail time. Who is Devontae trolling? Okay, wait, where's Devontae? Devontae, okay. Okay, let me let me ban him. Okay, Devontae, I'm banning you, brother. You, you're irritating people. All right, I got him out of here. Okay, I got Devontae out of here. But, yeah, he got five years. But then I heard that they were going to put him on probation, a house arrest. I heard it was going to be house arrest. 
Can y'all look that up for me real quickly? Because I because I, I get sometimes you know you got a lot of websites out here that are parody websites and they just deliberately put up misinformation. But they got laws out here now, specifically targeting black folks, just like with the, the, the drug laws. Like You got so many black men locked up for weed charges, but they got, especially in California, but now they done made weed legal for the white cats to open up these distilleries. And another thing, out here in California, the laws are so crazy. Now, you know, out here, they get you in so many ways. First of all, out here in California, they create a situation where black folks don't get hired. They know that, but they go out of their way to not hire black folks because now we got so many people, so many what they call illegal immigrants here who they get all the jobs. They And they, that's by design. The white supremacists allow that to happen. They talk all that shit about immigration. They love immigration. They allow all the people to come over here. They allow it. Don't let them fool you. They allow it. That, that cheap labor, they love it. So now what does that leave black people? Black people out here in California, the, the open job markets are very rare. Then you got a lot of unemployed black people out here who don't have skills because the schools are fucked up. The dope game is raggedy. Now they've legalized weed, so you can't really get out here and get the weed game popping. So you start fucking with that hard shit, and now you're going to do a million years for the hard shit, in which they ain't, those Mexicans and those South Americans ain't trying to give up them connects for the, the hard shit no more. And cats trying to get into the underworld and the, the, the street money, it ain't popping no more. You can't carjack people and sell those cars like they used to back in the day, back in the 90s when people were carjacking and selling them cars for like two, dollars $3,000 to the Russian mafia and all that shit out here back in the 90s. When that was the lick, that ain't happening no more. Now they got the carjacking laws. Or, nah, they they going to bury you for them carjacking laws. And they got felony evasion out here now. So if you, you run from the cops, that's a felony. Back in the day, you could run from the cops and you just got away. So the streets, are they drying the streets up out here. And then dudes try to put a foot in the pimping game. They didn't dry, they're drying that up right now. They got something called Proposition 35. They got something called Proposition 35 out here in California. That means they out here giving pimps life sentences right now. They are giving pimps out here in California life sentences. There's a dude out here recently, the first pimp ever in this country who has a life sentence for pimping. I can't think of this nigga's name, but um, he just seems a low-level tennis shoe pimp. He wasn't nobody really known in the game, but just some low-level tennis shoe pimp. They got him on that, that Prop 35 law. Bam. They gave that nigga life in prison. Yeah, they got that human trafficking thing, which is very interesting with the human trafficking thing because they let the pedophiles go wild on kids out here and give them slaps on the wrist like Jared. Life, nigga. You better Google Proposition 35. Google Proposition 35. For pimping, nigga, for having a chick give you some money. So now that opens up a lot of doors. So now you meet a chick who's a stripper or whatever, and you dating her, she give you some money, and she get caught up. All she got to do is say, hey, that nigga made me do this. And then clank. Oh, no. No, no. They, that, three, that three strike shit was taking too long. Oh, that three strike shit was taking too long. They're giving dudes. They got that human trafficking bullshit that they got specifically for black people. Because they know that a lot of black folks are trying to get in the game because ain't no money out here in the square world. So a lot of people are going to hit that underground. So they're going to get that covered too. As much as they can. Life. For getting some somebody giving you some money, that's life. And they got the Bunny Ranch and all that shit in Nevada. They do it all on TV bragging. And they got the Playboy Bunny Mansion. Hugh Hefner is basically pimping. <clears throat> Yeah, 
Yep, y'all Google Prop 35. So now, nigga, you got a stripper girlfriend. Who's, and that's funny. They, they're giving the pimp. The, the tricks don't get nothing. Because it's really harsh on people if you're pimping underage kids, which you shouldn't be doing anyway. You gotta, you're fucking with those minors, that's a no-no. You shouldn't be doing that anyway. But a, a life? The pedophiles don't even get that. So the, you can have sex with one, but don't pimp one. You shouldn't do shit with them. The law should be all across the board. That's crazy. The game is, they, they sewing that game up out here, man. They trying to drive the streets up so they can get that prison nice and full. I heard a little bit of Obama's speech about black women. I, I, I caught somebody who was talking about how black women make less money the white males, it was something like that. What's that? What's that? Yeah, it's crazy out here, man. Yeah, it's crazy out here. This is who we got on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's going on, uh, Tariq? Uh, this is. Uh, wow, I can't, I got to let me mute my computer, it is live. Nigga, yeah, um, nigga, I'm what is your uh, name? What is your name, uh, brother? What is your name? Goddamn, what is your name, bro? <laughs> my name is, this is Ed from New York. Ed, Ed from, from New York. York, man, will y'all stop smoking yeah. that narcotic before y'all call, man? Y'all call <laughs> my shit and want to hit the pipe. What's on your mind, brother? Uh, well, I'm actually going to be um, traveling out to L.A. for the first time ever um, this week. Okay. And um, um, I actually have uh, like uh, for for someone like myself coming from out of town, like you know, what, what's some good spots to head up? Um, you know, like like from like the Hollywood area, you know, Los Angeles, because I'm coming from New York. So you know, I just wanted to see some you know nice scenes and check out the vibes out there, pretty much. All right, now you trying I'm to meet some, you trying to meet the ladies? You just trying to sightsee? What you trying to do? Are you bringing your lady with oh, you? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much going on. I don't know. It's, it's for a music convention, so it's just going to be me. But um, I mean, a little bit of both is cool, you know. Sightseeing, you know, checking out some uh, some of the females out there as well. You know, that'd be dope. So I know what That's you could probably do. You can go to um, place like Santa Monica Boulevard late at night. Um, you can meet some okay. real nice ladies out there. There's a whole bunch of them out there on Santa Monica Boulevard. Um, now they they work out, so they're going to look kind of strong. But yeah, <laughs> go down to Santa Monica Boulevard in Highland, and there's a lot of ladies out there. <laughs> Don't be fooled by the deep voices, all right? That's it's the smog uh -huh. out here. So you know, uh -huh. hook hook up with them, and um, you can go down to the Compton Swap Meet and and meet some okay. ladies. <laughs> no, no. Well, what you can do, you can go to Sunset, go to um, some of the clubs out there on Sunset Boulevard. Um, just kind of hang out on Hollywood Boulevard and places like that. And, you know, that's that's going to be the go-to place. In the daytime, Melrose Boulevard, um, the Beverly Center, places like that, Rodeo Drive and Beverly Hill, places like that are some of the places you should just kind of, that's more touristy for people to kind of hang out and just get a vibe of L.A. You feel me? Awesome. All right, that's, that's what's up, man. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks bro. All right. Yes, indeed. All right, I was fucking with you. Don't go out to Santa Monica, brother. Hey, because you're going to fuck around and meet some Caitlyn Jenners out there. And, and you, know, you know, you don't want, that's not what you want. Because <laughs> my man go out there and do it. I don't want him to do it. Man. Did y'all see down in Texas, there was this, um, this white supremacist dude. And this is how slick they are. They're so slick. This dude vandalized his truck. He, he, he vandalized his truck and sprayed Black Lives Matter on his truck. Ran out to the news talking about some black people vandalized his van. His truck, rather. Then he started getting donations. He set up a GoFundMe page. These white supremacists, they understand the hustle. So he got like $6,000. They good at this. I told y'all about this before. They This is an old white supremacist trick. The white supremacists, they will rally around each other 
against a perceived black threat. The threat don't even have to be real. This fool sprayed Black Lives Matter on his truck and started getting a bunch of donations. Then the cops realized, wait a minute. Something ain't right. The police report ain't right because he said one thing in the police report, then got on the news and then told some more lies. He started overselling his lie on the news. He's like, yeah, man, my, my truck was spray painted. They broke the radio. They stole stuff out my glove compartment. And the cops were like, hey, he didn't tell us all that now. Then they realized, okay, then they started investigating him, found out his ass was lying. He was lying. Anytime y'all see somebody talk about Black Lives Matter and spray painted something on their house, this ain't the first time that has happened, by the way. There's a few white supremacists that then ran around talking about, I came home and they spray painted Black Lives Matter on my house. And then they found out that they did it. Let me, white supremacists, if you're looking, Nobody really believes you because black society, let me say this, nobody in black society really takes Black Lives Matter that seriously. The, the white supremacist media, they keep making it seem like Black Lives Matter is this huge organization that all black people are somehow a part of. The majority of black folks don't give a fuck about Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is just a white supremacist code word. Black people can't even tell you who the founders of it was. You don't even know the names of those people unless you Google them. Black people don't give a shit about Black Lives Matter. Black people ain't going around spray painting no Black Lives Matter or nobody's home. Most of the Black Lives Matter protesters are there because they're funded by the white supremacists. That's the only reason they show up. The so-called Black Lives Matter people, they're funded by white supremacists. They show up with the, the money given to them by the Soros and the Open Society Foundation, all those people. It's a joke. Black folks don't follow Black Lives Matter like that. It's nothing but a media trend. That's all it is. So black folks ain't going to be doing crimes under the name of Black Lives Matter. So anytime y'all see a story where some white supremacist is talking about Black Lives Matter and vandalized and spray painted something on their house, they did it. The white supremacists did it themselves. Now the Black Lives Matter people, this is another thing. They're trying to pretend that they're not getting their money from George Soros. That's funny. I was having a debate with somebody on my YouTube, my, my, my Facebook page about that. He was one of those little Black Lives Matter queens. There's a lot of those gay dudes. And, and, and they're so full of shit. He couldn't even lie straight. They're trying to say, well, they're trying to be slick. They're like, well, George Soros, he didn't give Black Lives Matter $33 million. Well, he gave him some money. He gave him something. Because what happens is George Soros, he funds the Open Society Foundation, and they're the ones who fund Black Lives Matter. See, they try to be real slick with the words. These people try to be real slick with the words. You know, then they, they try to debate the dollar amount. I don't care what the dollar amount is. We know that George Soros and other people like that, non-black people, are funding the Black Lives Matter organization. We, we know this. And that chick, the, the one of the co-founders, because they love to say, well, it was started by three black women who were feminists. And all. Stop it. Because the woman, one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, Opal Tometi, I think that's her name, Opal Tometi. She was part of an organization. She was running an organization called the Black Alliance for Just Immigration. All right? That organization got $100,000 from George Soros. This is documented. This is, this ain't no conjecture. This is proof. The Black Alliance for Just Immigration and Opal Tameli, whatever her name is, Tameli, she, start, she started Black Lives. She's one of the people who started Black Lives Matter. So it's documented that all these little splinter groups, they're getting their funding from Soros and all of his splinter groups. So they try to be slick now. 
They try to play little word semantics. Well, George Soros didn't give us the money. No, but the, the organization he funded gave you the money. Let's stop lying to black folks. Stop lying to black people. Stop. Because there are some of us out there who do something called research. Stop lying. Stop lying. Stop lying. Stop lying. Let's see who this is. What's up? Who's calling? Stop lying. This is like, oh, stop. I'm sorry. This is Nayat from New York City. Mayette? Oh, oh, what, what's your name, sweetie? I'm sorry. It's Mayette from New York City. Mayette, you called before, haven't you? Your voice sounds familiar. I have, yes. <laughs> I called a few times, actually. Okay. What, what were you calling for uh, about before? You know, Tariq. I, I, I really forgot. I talked to so many people, but I forgot. Okay. <laughs> well, and um, the the one that's most pop known is about my husband who's from Africa. Oh, I met you. Yes, on the, yes. Yeah, yeah, I met you in it was in Philly, right? Philly, yes. I went to your Philly um, lecture. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there we go. Now I remember. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, now what? Oh, <laughs> now hold on. Before we go anywhere, we got it. What's the deal with no. the husband? No, no, no. What's the difference? Okay. And, and look, and, and a lot of folks, we thought because you were going in this, through the situation with your husband, a lot of people thought that you were going to be toe up or whatever. She's a cute ass chick. This is a cute sister. Oh, thank you. She's a very thank attractive you. sister. I'm like, what you doing dealing with this bullshit? But go, what's up with you and your husband now? Well, we're separated now. Oh, shit. I'm filing for divorce and he's refusing to sign papers. He's refusing to go through with the divorce. So, it's just very frustrating, but whatever. Oh, it is. It's this is, a, I am not going to let you go. I am not letting you go. This is not going to happen. Yeah, he, I mean, he's just selfish. There's really no, I don't, I don't get it, but I get it's it. happening. Whether he wants to sign off or not, it's happening. But, I get it. He wants um, to get that damn green card. He don't want you to fuck that up. He don't want you oh, to. Oh, stop it. It's been, two, it's been over 12 years now, Curry. I mean, 12 years. Does, does he have his green card um, yet? Is he a citizen yet? No, he's still not a citizen, no. Exactly. Exactly. He's like, I've been fucking you for 12 years. Are you going to fuck this up in a divorce? He don't want you to fuck that up. So what What made you, what, what, what made y'all give it up? What made y'all say this ain't going to happen? It's just the traveling for me. Just him being away for too long and just excuses on top of excuses. And, you know, I've been in Senegal. I've seen what he's done. And I know he's a very busy person, but it's just, it's just the last few years, just, this is not adding up. It's just really not adding up. And I really, just because the man that he showed me to be for all these years, it's just, it's just, I gave him a chance because I honestly believed him. He's never, ever gave me a reason not to trust him. He's never been dishonest. He's always been a man of his word. He has such great integrity. Like, I just, he's a good person. So yeah. this was kind of shock. So I kind of may have been slow to it because, honestly, I didn't just meet him in two days. We had a long life together. We've done so much things together. If the green card was his main objective, he could have been, like, he still way, 12 years of being married, all the travel we've done, everything he bought me, just everything, our lifestyle, to me, he wasted, he could have just, and he spent a lot of money if that was his main objective, just to get a green card. So just yeah, get, that, that green card is important. It, you know? Well, he, well, I got a video of him that he made trying to get you back. Is this him right here? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> So now, now, are you are you seeing some other person now while you're getting a divorce? Is there some new interest that you have going on in your life? Absolutely nothing. I have nothing here. No, I don't have any new interest. Um, How you don't have no interest? You're not a bad, you a nice looking sister. How the hell ain't nobody trying to push up on all that? You nice and thick and fly. Well, how come ain't nobody <laughs> pushing up? Thank you. Because honestly, I just go to work and I come home. So I really don't go out like that but i'm really active as far as in the community so yeah i've been networking with a lot of different organizations which is what is making this process a lot easier for me because i'm not focusing on my issues i'm really out here mm -hmm. 
trying to make a difference, trying to get more deeply involved in community issues. So, yeah. um, and even that, I'm not really interacting with guys like that, like they're cool, but I just have, I don't know, I have no prospects at all. It's just crazy. Oh, man. Like, wow, but, yeah. Oh, don't don't turn into a bedwitch now, because when sister starts saying that, then, then the... oh, absolutely never. That would never happen. I'm not attracted to white men at all. <laughs> it was, not, nah. I'm not so hating, you know, but just way. you know, just don't be a bedwitch. I don't want you to show up at the club with this dude right here. Hold on. Crank your underhanded, Pat. double dream hands, and butterfly. Double dream hands, freestyle. Make a tight group. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm totally pro-black, so I, I will never go that way. Like, I'm not interested. Let, let, let everybody know what your what your Facebook page is so, or your Instagram. What's your Instagram? Um, my Instagram is a fashionista524. Hold on, let me let me find it so I can so add it. A, a, a fashionista. Yeah, so it's F A S H. Wait, wait, wait. Start over. So, wait, 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 wait. Start over. Spell it from the top. Okay, so it's F A F A S H. Okay. Two Y F A S H. Okay. Uh huh. I S T A. So it's fashionista. Okay. And then the number is five twenty four. My page is private, but yeah. Right. And you, God is good. That's what you got. God is, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just requested you on there so they can see your cover. You got the little colorful head wrap. There you go. Y'all, yes. y'all go follow Fastanisha, fa Fast Fashionista Five Twenty Four. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a lot of people following you right now, so you can choose who you want to follow you. And y'all can see she's very Definitely. cute. She's on her thing. She's very cute. Got the little Egyptian eye liner going on and all that. But Thanks. anyway. Um, but I'm going to be hooking up some stuff in New York. I want you to work with me in New York on some stuff we got going on with Melanoid Nation. Oh my gosh, I would love that. Yes, indeed. Because um, um, I'm, I'm thinking about, I've been wanting to do like a convention or an award show, like a Melanoid Nation award show or Hidden Colors convention somewhere at the Apollo Theater. So we need people in the community who can help out with that. So I'll keep you posted on that, sister. Oh, please do. Please do. Now, really quick, Terry, because I wanted to ask you something. Go ahead. I the Million Man March. Yes. Okay, because, all right, I'm attending that march as well with a few of my friends, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but I have been hearing and I've seen some video, videos of white supremacists that are doing what they do best, and that's lying. Um, they're talking about, um, they're inciting a lot of anger and rage in their community, saying that um, Minister Farrakhan is calling for 10,000 black men to kill all white people. Right. So I've personally watched about three videos where they're claiming, I'm not sure if it's true or not, I'm not sure if you've even heard about this, but they're claiming that they're coming to the Million Man March in D.C. with guns, and they're going to protect their country, and they're protecting what's they theirs. are. They're not going so, to be, they ain't coming around all the black folks. They, white supremacists are full of <laughs> shit. They ain't going to be nowhere near Washington, D.C. I promise you that. The white That's supremacists are full of shit. They ain't going to be nowhere near Virginia, Maryland. They ain't going to be nowhere near white. They just run in their damn mouth. The white supremacists, they only go where there's an unequal advantage, where there's children or something like that. They're not going to go out there to that damn million man march at all because it's going to be real out there. And we ain't going to be for that bullshit. So it ain't going to be no easy win. Exactly. So they ain't coming out there. And I ain't. We ain't worried and don't be worried at all. All right. Yeah, because people like you shouldn't go, and I'm like, I'm not. I don't have fear, so I don't think that. I think they're just bluffing, and they're trying to invoke fear so that we the event is not successful. They want us not to show up. So exactly. I I kind of wasn't buying, but I wanted to know your feel. How did you feel about it? So I'm pretty much feel the same way. They're full of crap, and we're gonna be there, and they're not coming, but. Yeah, they try to make all these videos talking about they're going to come with guns. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, they, they ain't going to do shit. They're not going to do a goddamn thing. They they only show up when there's a big advantage, when they have a, a, a lot of, when there's a lot of unarmed kids and all that old stuff. They, they ain't showing up. They're just running their mouths. They said the same thing. They were going to come down to Texas somewhere um, and do all this old shit. They, no. They, they always talk that shit about what they're going to do. And when they're really confronted, Face to face, they ain't gonna do nothing. It, it has to be an a, an advantage to their. Advantage. It has to be an unequal advantage for them, because look at that video where Quanell X from the Black Panthers he stood up and him and the Black Panthers stood up to some of those white supremacists down there. Them white supremacists didn't do shit 
And he told him, I they didn't do anything. They didn't do shit. Exactly. And the, he, that, that same white dude was on YouTube talking about all that shit. He, if I see a nigga, a black, you black masters, I get my slingshot and all that. He didn't do <laughs> shit when he got confronted by the Black Panthers. So white supremacists are liars and punks and pussies. So understand that. And we'll see you out there in D.C. Yes, they are. All right, sister. All right, see you then. Have a good evening. Okay. All right. Nice talk to you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful sister with the African ex-husband that she's about to have. Y'all better scoop her up. She's a nice-looking sister. Yeah, I met her down in Philly. She um, came down to Philly. Fashionista524 on Instagram. Yes, indeed. Man. Yeah, they they not they, they these these dudes talk all that tough talk. Dude, they, name any time in history when they fuck with them FOIs, man. They know not to fuck with them FOIs. All them FOIs that's going to be out there, they ain't, no, no, it ain't going to, no. The white supremacists ain't stupid. And these little militia groups, they, they know where to go and where not to go. They know where to go and where not to go. What's up, uh, Sicario? Did she say her age on her page? How do you know her age? Did I don't? Did she say her age? And don't forget, man, go to TarikaLeet.com to get this gear. That's TarikaLeet.com to get this gear. You know that story about that kid who went to school with a clock and they said it was a bomb? That's Ahmed. They had the hashtag, I stand with Ahmed, or whatever his name is. I find that very interesting. I find that very interesting. With this Ahmed dude, they're going out of their way to prop him up and apologize. They're going out of their way with this guy. Y'all notice that with this guy, the, the kid who went to school with the clock and they said it was a bomb, you know, they gave him a nigga wake up call. He's a little Sudanese boy. He's from Sudan. Ahmed Muhammad, I think that's his name. A little Muslim kid from Sudan. He's from Africa. And, you know, he went to school with a clock and the teacher said it was a bomb. Then they arrested him. And what the white supremacists are doing and this is this is the trick. This is how white supremacy works. Because he's not a black American, they can shower him with accolades and apologies. All right? Now, if he was just a regular black American, they would have been like, well, nigga, you shouldn't have done it. No apology. See, with us, we don't get the apologies. Black people from America, no, no, because if you apologize for one thing, you got to apologize for the other shit you do. You got it? You know you're not supposed to do children like that, but they do us, our children, like that all the time. They gaffle us up all the time, but they won't apologize for it because that's normal. If they apologize for that, they got to apologize for some other shit. They're not apologizing for Tamir Rice. They're not apologizing for the other 16-year-old boy they beat in the face the other day, I think, in Texas. They're not apologizing for the little girl that they jumped on out there in Texas. They're not apologizing to us and our children for the shit they do. Obama's not coming out immediately saying, hey, I'm going to invite you to the White House for getting your ass whooped. I'm going to invite your mom to the White House for getting your son shot by the cops. But they're apologizing to the, the kid. Because, number one, he's black but not really black. See? He's black but he's not bringing that black American culture with him. And see, we, they don't want to give the impression that they're going to treat immigrants from other countries. Because see, that boy, he has a home country, the Sudan, and they have diplomatic relations with the U.S. So word gets back that in the Sudan, that Sudanese people are getting their asses whooped over here. They can't go over to Africa and start colonizing like they're supposed to. Understand the game, family. 
See, they real slick with that. They'll beat the shit out of us because Ahmed, the little boy, he looks like a regular black kid. He got the little um, Sudanese S curl, but he looks like a little black kid if he had on a hat. But when, but he looks like a black kid. But if you start beating up on the Sudanese and the word gets back, oh, that's going to fuck up. Now you can't go over there with your imperialistic motives. Over there in the Sudan where they got that oil all over there in East Africa where they're trying to get a foothold over there. You understand? They're trying to get over there in the Sudan. They're trying to get over there and get some of that oil. That's why they're going out of their way. Microsoft is apologizing. Hey, hey, Ahmed, we'll give you a job. Hey, you know, hey, you want to come to the White House and have, drink some, some lemonade? Hey, Ahmed, they're really, they showering this dude. They are showering this dude with accolades now. Yeah, the Sudan has oil. You see? They do have oil over there. Yes, they do. They got oil over there in East Africa. Yes, they do. They got oil over there in East Africa, bro. Over there in that area? They got oil over there. Yeah, so they're offering this dude all types of stuff. Yeah, the South Sudan got oil. Who the man? South Sudan got oil, bruh. Yes, they do got oil over there. That, that's real talk. Yeah, they got it. There's a lot of oil over there. That's why they kissing that boy's ass. That's why they're rolling out the red carpet for him. They're like, oh, we we only oh we didn't we thought you were one of our niggas. We didn't know that you were a guest nigga. Oh, so, sorry, our man. We're so sorry for for treating you like we treat all these other niggas. We're so sorry. You want to come to the White House? No, Obama didn't invite nobody to the White House. We getting our asses slaughtered out here. We don't get shit. That's why they're showering him. So let, let's let's be very clear. Oh, his dad ran for president? Uh, I got to verify that. He said his dad ran for president of South Sudan. So his dad, oh, if that's true, and I don't doubt that now because I, his dad must be hooked up. His dad is a politician. Okay. Yeah, so his dad is hooked in. Okay, there, there you go. His dad is hooked into the pol political things over there. So his dad is hooked into that polit got that political clout. See, they see that's that's the whole part of the game. They know when shit is wrong. They know that it's wrong to gaffle up children like that. They know that it's wrong to gaffle up children like that. So he's connected. He was a connected Negro. That's why we need to get connections. That right there shows you why we need to get our money game together and get our connections going. That's why we need our connections. Because if it were us, now, now y'all see it makes sense. Just think about it. We are getting our asses kicked. We don't get no apologies. There's a reason why they apologize. I've seen this kid on every news channel. They're just parading him around. None of that stuff about, well, Ahmed smoked a joint. Well, he was, he looked like he was high. He listened to rap music. None of that stuff that they do to us. When they, when black American children get beat up, they tell you about what rap record we listened to. Was our pants sagging? What color we had on? Was it a gang color? We get all that blame the victim shit on us. They ain't about to mess up ties with the Sudan. They are not about to mess up ties with the Sudan. The Sudan, that's a very strategic location that they're trying to get a stranglehold on. No, that Ahmed dude is my color. 
That little Ahmed boy is my color. He just has a little um, East African perm. That's it. I, they, they should sue. Oh, let me let you allow links. Okay, let me let you allow links. Because I, I, I didn't know that the dude's dad had political ties like that. I, I knew that they were kissing his ass because... Of the he's from the Sudan. Allow me. All right, that's the um. Y'all can allow links now. I can allow links. Well, the thing is, if it looked like a bomb or not or whatever. The problem is, see, there are white kids who have gone to school with stuff that looked like bombs and they've gotten arrested and all that, but they, I mean, they didn't get arrested. They got put out of school, but they haven't been arrested. See, well, Ahmed, he's 14 years old and they got him in cuffs and they got pictures of him in cuffs. You dig? Okay, there you go. Muhammad. Ellis Ellison Mohammed. Okay. But yeah, they go over, you know, they they it's overkill with us, with black folks. You know, they think it's a bomb and it's, they they go over with us. And now they're apologizing profusely because they know that what they did was wrong. They shouldn't have arrested that kid like that and put him in juvie. And they, they, they did him real slick until they found out that he was an immigrant and that he had ties to the Sudan. They did him just like every other nigga until they found out he had ties to the Sudan. There's a reason why Obama immediately... The next day, start tweeting, hey, I'm, you okay? There's a reason why. So we got to get connections. That's why we got to get our money game so we can get our political game in order. Coons are going to be coons. But we got to get our political game in order. We got to get our political game in order. We got to get our money game in order. You know, I got to go watch that show. I want to go. Oh, my man Ola was telling me about this show on Netflix, um, Narco. It's about Pablo Escobar. I want to. I'm gonna start watching that tonight. I was looking on my Facebook and they had an ad for it. That shit looks tight. That shit. Netflix is on top of their game, man. They got some tight ass shows. Y'all hit up Netflix and get them to play Hidden Colors. By the way. Everybody email Netflix so we can get hidden. They had it in their system. Now they don't have it in their system anymore. Email Netflix so we can get hidden colors on there. We really need to get hidden colors on Netflix. Say Narco is great. It looked like it, man. I want to see that. Say Narco is the shit. Yeah, Netflix is winning right now, man. Netflix is winning. Well, Sicario, hell, there's black folks in America who don't want to be black, so shit. Man. Pablo Escobar wasn't a joke with the political game. There's a great book on him um, called Killing Pablo. Pablo Escobar was not playing around, man. This dude had the political game locked down. He used his money to buy politicians, and he bought the police. So when the politicians turned on him, politicians ended up dead. This nigga was smoking prosecutors he was getting them he was getting judges killed this nigga Pablo Escobar made a deal to go to prison he said if I go to jail 
I got to build my own prison. That nigga built his own prison. He cut a deal with the Colombian government to build his own prison. This nigga had a club in his prison, a nightclub. That nigga had a nightclub in his prison. He had it popping at that prison. That's how connected he was. That man used his money in a major way. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it was the U.S. that got Pablo. They they started funding this organization called Los Pepes. That was funded by the U.S. It was an organization that was a vigilante organization that were going around killing Pablo's people. Called Los Pepes. It's just like those jackal organizations that they get to kill off political leaders. Real deep shit. Hidden Colors is copyrighted. We got a copyright with Hidden Colors. You can look up the go to the copyright office online and see the copyright for Hidden Colors. All three of them is copyrighted. Yeah, the government couldn't even go around his prison. Oh, they they had Queen Noble. That's funny. I haven't been to Colombia. I've been to. I was going to go to Colombia. I ended up going to Costa Rica. Off the day, it's, that people sleep on Costa Rica. That's a beautiful country. There's some fine motherfuckers out there too. There's some fine motherfuckers out there in Costa Rica, man. What's the best pay per view special I have? One of my favorite lecture pay per view specials is Black Secret Societies. That's at MacLessons.com. Now, one of my favorite. Video pay-per-view specials, but well, two of them is Code of Conduct. That's very good. You can get that at TariqRadio.com. And International Racism is very good. That's at TariqRadio.com. Another one of my favorite pay-per-views is um, uh, Sex Magic. Where I talk about the sex rituals. That's at MacLessons.com. That's an older one. So there's a lot of them that I have. But go to MacLessons.com to get some of my old pay-per-view specials and go to TariqRadio.com. Anyway, y'all, let me get up out of here because I got to start work. I got to do some editing for Hidden Colors. For when I, uh, editing by meaning I have to write everything out to send to my editor. The Hidden Colors DVD, the, the film... I got to listen to all the interviews and then write the parts that we're going to keep and what's going to be taken out. When I write all of those out, I type up the document and send that to my editor's notes. And I got to go through hours and hours and hours and hours of footage and pick out what's the best material to use. Then I got to cut that down some more. So it's a long process going through so much material, stop, listen, stop, listen, write down the minute marks, stop, play, rewind, write down the minute marks, stop. It's a long process, man. But man, so many people in Hidden Colors 4 spend so much hot fire. I'm telling James Small, we got James Small again in this. He's spitting hot fire. James Small is spitting that, that lava. Lila Africa is spitting that hot fire in there. We got some, they, they getting it in in this one. Anyway, y'all, let me, it uh, it takes a few months to, to, add, to add, um, edit. It takes a few months to edit. Anyway, y'all, let me get up out of here, fam. Go to TariqRadio.com. Get the pay-per-view specials. Go to TariqElite.com. Get the shirts. Go to MelanoidNation.org. Donate. Make your little small donations. And then get the flag, get that Melanoid Nation flag, get this RBG shirt right here at TarikaLeet.com. And I'm going to holler at you guys on Wednesday's show.